That'd be great. Go ahead, Darren. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. And like I said, Amanda should be jumping on here in a second. Um, she she got caught up in another meeting. So um, yeah, do we have a nine month old and she sleeps like 10, 11 hours a night. It's amazing. I don't know. It's I, it's our first kid. So I don't know if it's just like a uh, luck or the cradle wise is really just like a magical piece of equipment. So I've actually recommended it for a couple of people and they, um, they bought it too. And they're like, this is amazing. Thanks so much for this recommendation. Wow. This is so awesome, Darren. I mean, yes, obviously I think so. Uh, your daughter has been uh, really awesome at sleep because that's not how I, you know, my journey with parenthood started. So, you know, you're de definitely blessed. And yeah, we're spoiled, I think. We're like, should we even <laughs> have another kid? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, Cindy, as like, you know, Darren and Amanda are Trailwise users, and generally we get uh, parents who have used uh, Trailwise and who are willing to share their journey uh, so that... Uh, you know, uh, the parents on the other side can make a purchase choice and understand or sometimes just ask questions that you might have as you uh, navigate through, you know, all the your registry items and uh, what you need to do to prepare. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, this is going to be a AMA session and uh, please feel free to like, you know, make it like a, a, a very informal discussion. Uh, and uh, Gabby, I'll I'll take it away from here. Uh, so, um, hi, I'm I'm Radhika. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Trailwise. Um, I have two kids, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, much out of the crib stage, but they were my inspiration uh, behind starting uh, Cradlewise. And we did some uh, ex experiments so that they could sleep well, and in the sense that we we built a homegrown uh, crib for them so that. Uh, uh, we could manage and keep ourselves sane through this peak of our life where we are managing our work and uh, also baby. And uh, slowly it spawned into a venture and here we are, you know, like uh, we are shipping cribs all across US and helping parents like uh, Darren and Amanda uh, with their uh, sleep and, and help the entire family sleep better. So that's how it all started. Uh, my kids are an inspiration for everything that has gone into Cradle Wise. Like my test was, if I have to put my baby in this crib, will I use this cotton? Will I use this wood? Will I, will I have this as a privacy policy? I mean, everything has been thought uh, from if I had to buy this crib for my baby, right? Um, and I'm going to explain you through the th thought process, the structure, the design, uh, how uh, how the technology works. I'll also walk you through uh, the app uh, and uh, I will um, ask Darren and Amanda to come and uh, give their uh, any, any story which is uh, specific and how that particular feature benefited them. I'm going to ask them uh, to interject and uh, share their story and also talk about the certifications, show you the internals of the crib uh, that that that's the plan uh, for the demo today. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will start while we wait for Amanda to come in. Uh, this is the crib. Uh, we, you see this monitor arc. This is the place where uh, the baby monitor is located. This baby monitor can see only within the crib, right? Uh, we have designed it in such a way that. Uh, this crib is going to be in your master bedroom, maybe for the first six months, if you choose to uh, room share. Uh, and uh, so that way you, you are not bothered about the camera looking into the entire room. Uh, for the first six months, it's a bassinet. Uh, you can see from the silhouette that uh, the bed position is uh, at the topmost level uh, for the first six months. And when the baby is able to push its uh, shoulders on its arm, uh, you or at six months, whichever milestone occurs first, you need to move the bassinet to the crib position. So there are only two uh, height adjustments, the bassinet mode and the crib mode. Uh, this is as per the certifications because all these heights are fixed from the top rail to the bassinet bed. That's a certification from the top rail to the 
uh, mattress in the crib mode. That's a certification. So you cannot have any other um, height adjustment uh, in the crib. And uh, it also has a sound machine. So it's basically a monitor, a crib, a bassinet, and a sound machine all packed into one. Hi, Amanda. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. Yes, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself uh, quickly. We already heard a few things from Darren, but you know. Uh, yes, would... perfect. Yes, my husband Darren was here. I was late from a meeting, but again, my name's Amanda Rendell Johnson and big fan of Cradle Wise. My nine-month-old, it has saved our lives. So very <laughs> appreciative. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so I was I just started with the demo and uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, please feel free to share anything uh, specific when we are talking around a, a particular feature, uh, maybe share a sto story or a incidents when, you know, uh, Krillwise helped and Cindy, please feel free to ask any questions to Darren and Amanda uh, as we walk through the demo, right? Okay. Yeah. Did sure. you want me to wait till the end for my questions or as they come up as we talk about a certain feature or topic? Oh, no, you you can uh, you can ask them uh, in between when, you know, because there is a flow and in that flow, if you realize, oh, I need to ask this question, please go ahead. It's best to, you know, do it in the flow. Yeah. So I actually did one have question in regards to the uh, camera uh, mm -hmm. above the that you're mentioning. I know there's been a lot of like security issues in terms of like people hacking into monitors and stuff like that. Like, is there anything that's being addressed or, or preventative for that? Yeah. So uh, the way, uh, yes, smart home devices, we hear these reports very often of those cameras being hacked and your concern is very valid. So we have end-to-end -end encryption uh, for the video stream. Uh, even if I want, I can't see the stream because uh, it's your login and if we have caregiver functionality. So only if you give access to maybe your your parents or a nanny, then they can access it. Um, and we have end-to-end -end encryption. And one of the best things is you can do is the login and the password has to be strong enough um uh, for uh, for ensuring that you know uh, there are no uh, and and because it's a uh, we don't have the apis just getting a little technical we don't have the apis that are open um there are no uh, uh, like kind of like widgets or apps or plugins that the developers are developing and it's uh, out there as an open source documentation so we have ensured that um all the basics in terms of uh, the encryption are taken care. We have a cloud through Amazon Web Services and those servers are located here in the US. Um, so yeah, we have taken care of all the uh, basics for uh, encryption and privacy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I I just explain uh, the bassinet and the crib. I'm just going to give it a push, and it's uh, it it is. I'm going to show you how it bounces. So it is gesture enabled, uh, Cindy. You can uh, either start it from the app, or when you are hands full and don't have your phone close by, we have also uh, a gesture based start where you just give it a light push for four to five times. Just like how you would rock the baby if it was not an automated crib, you give it a push and it starts bouncing. It will bounce at the level that you have set on the app. So if you need to change the intensity of the bounce, you need to go to the app. I'm going to walk you through the app too in a moment. Uh, so as you can see, when it started, um, it starts at the lowest amplitude and ramps to the uh, higher amplitude. So there are no jerky movements. We have ensured that it does a smooth start and even a smooth stop. Um, and I'm going to turn the original sound on. You can um, so zoom sometimes filters, but I'm going to turn the original sound on. Can you hear the uh, bouncing sound? We have made it extremely noiseless because if mm -hmm. the crib is there in your room and I'm a very sensitive sleeper, so if there's something going mm -mm, uh, through the night, I won't be able to sleep. So it took four years in perfecting this mechanism of bounce, which is extremely noiseless. And here I would like to ask Amanda that 
what what is your opinion on that yes i could i completely agree and i i have watched demos myself and i didn't really believe them until i had it in my home and had my baby in this crib um but, but yes i think it's so easy to kind of push on with your elbow while you're placing your baby in the crib and it slowly starts um and i could probably even just show you my app where that soothing bouncing has saved me from having to get up. Um, you know, we're going through teething right now. And so it's about nine soothes, nine soothes a night, but she doesn't wake up and she doesn't wake us up and she kind of gets herself back to sleep. Um, so again, I've not had any issues. My crib is in a different room and it has been. Um, but yeah, we fall asleep in her nursery chair all the time, but with her in the crib without it disturbing us got it got it that's so cool yeah yeah these are all these uh, the when they are going through these growth stages that's where uh, there are sm small regressions on sleep and a little bit of this technology can help us as we navigate right yeah thanks thanks for sharing that amanda so um yep yeah, uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to now share the app screen and uh <clears throat> I should walk you through the app. And then the um the bounce won't stop until you tell it to stop, correct? No, so uh, yeah. Uh that's that's a very good question. So the crib starts bouncing when it senses the baby is stirring and it stops the bounce when the baby goes to deep sleep. So we don't bounce through the night or you don't have to. Uh, there is an option to uh, take control completely. Like you can exactly say start the bounce now and stop the bounce in 30 minutes. You also mm -hmm. have that control, but um, there are two modes of operation and that's what I'm going to show you now. Uh, okay. There's a smart mode. Uh, and there is a manual mode. So right now it's in, um, one second, let me just change it to, so you can go to settings and you can see the mode, smart mode and off. So you can turn the bounce completely off or you can be in the smart mode. So I'm just turning it to smart mode. The sound. So you have both the soothe. So soothing consists of bounce and sound, uh, and uh, it will decide based on the sleep state of the baby what uh, to do. So right now, if the baby, it it will on its own turn on the sound and the bounce, and uh, it will keep b bouncing for that much time. Uh, I'll just turn the sound off. Uh, and once the baby goes back to sleep, it's going to stop the bounce and the sound uh, based on your settings. You can keep the sound on even after the baby goes back to sleep. There are a lot of customizations in the settings, uh, but the smart mode is where um, it will uh, take the this decision intelligently based on the sleep state. So to answer your question, Cindy, it's going to stop the bounce once the baby goes back to sleep. We don't want to bounce the, that's not what we would have done as parents. You wouldn't have bounced the baby 24 cross 7. So we don't believe in um, keeping the, the, the bouncing on through the night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this is the app. You can see the live uh, video of the baby. I'm just going to wave here and it's, it's a live video. Uh, and uh, there are some, uh, this is our new app, uh, as, as you would have known, Amanda, that we launched uh, this new app. Uh, this, it's a new UI and a lot of uh, new features have been added. So uh, on the top, you see the status. Um, you can uh, see the room temperature on the top right. You see 68 degree F uh, and you can uh, go into a full screen mode. Uh, where you know all the distractions are removed and you can just get the view of the baby uh, you can do audio monitoring uh, you can turn on the audio or uh, always on means even if the app goes in background you can still 
keep hearing the baby this is uh, helpful when you want to be hands free and not looking at the mobile um, and then you can flip camera and you have you can use it to your airpods and all of that um, we have a, a section that helps you with uh, understanding a few basics of how the product works uh, we have month-on-month um, -month baby sleep guides uh, these are all medically approved sleep guides so we have a lot of uh, content here that helps you uh, navigate through the app and the main is the 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 soothing controls uh, as you can see based on the sleep state of the baby it will go to level two and the sound uh, will be uh, at, at a particular level you can choose to lock suppose you feel that this is this is the best uh, setting and you want to lock it uh, you can always uh, lock it for uh, a time between uh, 1 to 30 minutes so for the next 15 minutes it's going to just keep it at level 2 and the sound will be off right these settings will be locked so we have this functionality of uh, locking your choice for a small duration and after those 15 minutes it will go back to smart soothing so that's uh, on the uh, lock functionality uh, you can also um, uh, there is something that we have introduced called as a start recipe you can set it in the settings start recipe is nothing but how the crib starts when you first place the baby uh, if you want it to bounce only gently at the very beginning and keep the white noise at the highest level then you can uh, kind of code it to behave in a particular way um, and uh, Cindy as you will um, like an, as you as you have the baby and you understand that there's a particular way in which the baby likes to uh, start his sleep right uh, his or her sleep it's mainly uh, they don't like the bounce in the first 10 minutes or they like a high level of bounce in the first 10 minutes so you can customize that and i don't know i mean have you tried this feature or just the smart mode works best for you we try to kind of manipulate what we thought was the perfect rest you know ours and really whatever Cradlewise decides to do always ends up being the best. Um, <laughs> again, when we're teething and going through like a sleeper, like some of those little points and we're having a rough night, she loves okay. to just be like rocked, like, like a wild woman and she'll go to sleep. <laughs> and so that is kind of like override. Let's exactly. see what I'm watching. And like, I can do this and kind of play with it a little bit more. But again, usually um, we don't touch our settings because whatever it's doing it's doing it perfectly so got i it. don't i have not touched that feature actually got it got it yeah yeah so uh, yes uh, as you mentioned right like some babies like like a roller coaster versus some like the gentle mode and that's why we have given that uh, customization to the parents uh, with respect to the start recipe i'm glad to know that the, the smart mode ends up uh, detecting what's best at that moment and um, that's the best uh, setting for uh, your baby. So that's on the smart mode. Uh, moving on to the uh, next tab, we have a sleep analytics page where you can see the sleep map of the baby. So because I don't have real data here, um, I can show you maybe, yeah. Uh, so if your uh, uh, baby has been sleeping from 6 p.m. to 6.23 p.m., you can see uh, that sleep slot and when your baby has been awake uh, you can see those slots right like uh, sleep total sleep duration total awake duration and what amanda was mentioning is the soothes so when the crib successfully ended up soothing the baby and from like stirring or awake to sleep we uh, qualify that as a soothe event and you can see the uh, red dots um, it's not here because I don't have the exact uh, data, but on the sides, right, you will see the red dots where um, the crib ended up soothing the baby. Um, so maybe, Amanda, you want to share? Uh... And I can even, I don't know if you're going to be able to see mine, but again, like I said, we're, I think people are going to be very envious of my baby who sleeps 11 hours a night. Um, but if <laughs> you can see that these are the perfect, like, this is what, when she's being soothed, and I, again, am like, yeah, I can just stop the share and maybe you want to pin oh, Amanda's 
screen. Yeah. yeah. So here is those are the red dots that she's soothed and maybe it's just like her rolling around she's not necessarily awake but it soothes her completely back to sleep and again almost 11 hours of sleep where I can work and sleep myself so I don't usually like to brag about it unless I'm in this kind of forum but yeah I don't tell my friends that I get 11 hours of sleep if I wanted it (laughs) yeah yeah so that's thanks for sharing that Amanda it uh, keeps us going honestly Yes. And I feel like all the, it's really helpful to like tell my pediatrician some of this, like, oh, this is what's going on. And they can kind of spawn on with the milestones that we might be coming up to. And so we're able to almost predict what our next five days are going to look like sleep wise based off of what uh, our app is telling us, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> great. Great. Yep. So that's uh, that's like the sleep map and um, you can also share it with your friends and family. So we have that. Um, the next one is the uh, sound dashboard. We have uh, the, the default traps, tracks that come with Cradlewise. We have like a calming rain and a noisy room or a sensitive sleeper and a deep sleeper. We also have a few lullabies that are there in and uh, what you can do here, the best part is you can actually customize the white noise. So apart from the standard white noises, you can also create your own track. Uh, you can choose between the color of noise. Uh, so what's, what's, what's the color of noise, right? Basically white, pink and brown. You would have uh, seen some of some of the meditation apps or the adult sleep apps talking about pink noise because it's very mellow and um, represents like the rumbly sounds and the womb and it's the closest to what the baby would have heard so like if you you can choose pink noise you can overlay a soft breeze or a nature sound like ocean waves and then you can also uh, overlay a heartbeat so you can create a sound track that best suits your baby and save it And you can um, then use that every time your baby goes back to sleep. Uh, I don't know, Amanda, if you're using the white noise tracks from the app, did you customize? We are just using the one straight from the app. There's also the speaker that you can kind of override and put music on. So when she's sitting in her crib and she's waking up and we're like, all right, we're walking in there. We'll put like a fun song on or something and then we'll go in. And so um, it's been fun. Right, right. Yes, so we, uh, what I'm analyzing, maybe uh, Spotify, you are streaming Spotify songs, fun songs. Yeah. So we have also integrated Spotify uh, with the crib. Uh, basically, you can now st- use this crib speaker and stream from your Spotify account, whichever playlist uh, best suits um, and th- it's not only for sleep time right as Amanda mentioned it, it's like uh, during the awake time or maybe you want to keep the baby engaged while you're running it as uh, it could be a good um, addition so that's on the sound uh, then we have a notifications tab where you will uh, get to know that the baby stirred and the crib started bouncing and uh, then the baby uh, slept so you you a lot of parents sometimes use this like if you're not at home and you have a caregiver and you're just like walking through what happened through the uh, through the last uh, uh, five six hours you'll be able to see like a history Uh, you can always choose to um, to turn on turn off notifications because if you are the one uh, you don't want an in and out notification that the baby's placed in the crib or baby's taken out of the crib so you have complete uh, customization from the settings you can also um, uh, filter them based on a waking event or a stirring event uh, so that uh, with the timestamps you can almost understand the story of sleep from the notifications um, then in the settings uh, as i mentioned these are all the settings a lot of customizations exist uh, you can uh, turn if you feel that you don't want gesture based control you can turn that off in the soothing, you can go switch between the smart mode and the manual mode of bounce. We also have a gentle mode of bounce, which is the, the lightest the crib can bounce at 
uh, some babies just prefer that it's like to give you a sense it's like how you would hold the baby in your arms and just pace lightly up and down in the room it's as gentle as that so you can also cap it to the gentle most mode of bounce we have seen sometimes for the first one month when you're still adjusting to the new life parents use gentle mode and then slowly turn on we also have a feature called as a uh, sensitivity so what sensitivity means is that how quick will the crib respond to your baby stirring so uh, initially for the first 6 months when they are when they need external help soothing you can keep the sensitivity at the highest level what this means is the crib is going to immediately jump into action when the baby stirs a little and uh, start bouncing and playing music because timing is everything right when it comes to say if you lose that moment the baby will end up uh, waking and and then uh, as you know once they are overstimulated it's difficult to get them back to sleep so uh, higher sensitivity means that the crib is going to spring into action uh, lower sensitivity means the crib is going to give more chance for the baby to toss and turn because as they grow old like at 9 months i mean they they are exploring that crib they are all over the place at that time you don't want to immediately start the bounce so you can slowly start reducing the sensitivity um, uh, and uh, give them a more, a more opportunity to move uh, so that's on the sensitivity i had mentioned about the start recipe so uh, this is our first attempt to help parents uh, uh, create uh, the way the crib starts because this was also from a lot of user feedback that we realized that it's best to give that control uh, what we heard that parents said that the baby has already slept because while feeding generally they end up sleeping and then i am placing in the crib and i don't want the bounce for the first 20 minutes it's just a choice and you will learn that as um, as you uh, you know uh, uh, you know the best right what the baby prefers so we are going to introduce more such recipes like maybe a nap recipe or uh, the or a wake up recipe right like sometimes you also need to wake the baby up because you are following a sleep schedule and the wake windows and the sleep windows so our first attempt towards making these uh, recipes is the start recipe and here you can control three things how much the crib starts bouncing uh, what level it starts bouncing so it could be a gentle level one all the four levels does the sound start do you want the sound or and at what level and the timer for the start recipe the start recipe will be in effect for how many minutes like anywhere between 1 minute to 30 minutes so um, that's what the start recipe is so you can code it and the moment you place the baby in the crib it's going to start with the parameters that you have specified so these are all the uh, different modes of operation and as you can see um, in the app itself you have uh, our, our customer support team uh, you can connect with our customer support team you can uh, write to them so you have 24 cross 7 support um, and if there is something which you're not understanding or something any any particular feedback you can reach out to our team anytime this is our in-house team we don't uh, outsource the customer support um, so I, I would leave it to Amanda Amanda anything specific that you want to talk about our customer support or uh, even the app yeah, I think really early on, we were having issues with the temperature not reading correctly in our crib right. versus, and again, as new parents, you're always so nervous about leaving a baby by themselves in their room. Um, we really quickly got on with customer service and actually it seemed that this could have been a whole system issue. So they had an update and it became very accurate um, just within an update. And that all took about one week, which I thought was amazingly responsive to say, oh, I think I'm having a problem and they identified a systematic problem. Um, so I was really impressed with that. And um, we actually had our baby early and we had ordered our cradle wise to come at a certain time. Um, mm -hmm. And we actually had to call them and see if they could deliver it a couple of weeks early and they were able to get it out to us shipped uh, earlier in the month. So um, I, whenever I've reached out, it's been amazing. Great, great. 
thank you so much that's one thing that we are very particular as you know right like we as parents we are anxious and crib should be the last thing for <laughs> your anxiety right like so we we try our best uh, as a literally a baby startup and we are still in the baby steps we we do our best and as amanda mentioned the crib is over the air update enabled so any issues or any feedback we are able to uh, every two weeks generally we have a release and we update the app and the firmware on the crib um, so uh, it's it's a living and breathing um, crib we uh, always update uh, new new features and bug fixes and yes our temperature monitoring was uh, inaccurate and we did a major release last year which has uh, now made it very accurate so there are some such things that if you reach out to us in fact it is also a, a indicator for us uh, to prioritize based on the customer's needs so we are very open to feedback please do reach out to us on customer support uh, chats and i do have to say the new update on the camera is amazing it's like <laughs> I, there's no like our room our nursery room is pitch black but we can see exactly what's going on in her crib so kudos right. to that <laughs> thank you thank you so much yes it took us some time but yep uh, we we got uh, and and a lot of uh, our parents uh, we did a lot of user interviews with our parents too we did an alpha launch and a beta launch so very thriving community and i'm so grateful to you know for all the feedback that you all give us thank you so much yep uh, what i'm going to do is maybe cindy if you have any questions uh, for uh, darren and amanda i'm going to just uh, set up the camera so that i can show you the internals of the crib and walk you through okay. that yep. yeah i had one question so like one of the things i'm i'm a little concerned with i think this item looks great but it's like when you guys travel or if you visit a relative um and are spending the night or so like does the, ba the baby gets so acclimated to the features of the cradle wise that it gets difficult when they're not in like a in the cradle wise and just like in a regular bassinet or crib like how how do you guys deal with that absolutely that was i think there and i that was our biggest concern is a, this is a lot of money and we're going to make our baby very dependent on this we're going to stay home for the rest of our lives we actually started traveling very quickly with our baby and we just have a pack, a normal pack and play and she sleeps well. So I don't know, like, I don't, I can't make those connections, but she sleeps just as well outside and at daycare in a crib at daycare and in a cradle wise and then in a pack and play when we're gone for a week. Um, so that was not an issue at all with us. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Th thanks, Amanda. And that's the thing, uh, Cindy, that uh, one of the reasons uh, that we have designed the way all the features are designed are very minimalist. So we rock or we soothe only when needed. Uh, and that also, because if not, you would have intervened, you would have uh, taken the baby out of the crib, bounced maybe on a yoga ball or paced back and forth. And then have the baby. So we exactly do what you would have done as a parent. Um, second best, right? Like <laughs> parents are the best, the cocooning, the coziness. Obviously, we can't replace that. But uh, so the crib is minimalist in its approach to soothing. That's one thing. Second thing is the sensitivity setting, right? Like we have seen a lot of parents use that as a weaning feature where they set it uh, to the highest initially when the babies need extra soothing and as they learn uh, to soothe themselves back to sleep you're slowly reducing the sensitivity so there's no pressure oh at six months sharp my baby should start sleeping through the night um, that anxiety point is not there and you can slowly reduce your sensitivity and we've seen parents do that over maybe six months right slowly and then the baby don't, doesn't need the bounce anymore. And as they, yeah, I mean, definitely when you are traveling, the environment is different. Um, and, and since this is, this is your first uh, baby, right, uh, Cindy? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah so you will realize that when, whenever there's change in environment, definitely there is 
some sleep uh, changes that you will observe, right? Like when you're in the comfort of your home, it's all fine. It's, it's working as per schedule, but when you're outside, so there's going to be some amount of effort uh, when you are traveling, but for the 98% of the times when, when you're in the home, at least the baby is going to get uh, the best sleep. Cool. Um, I will. Uh, I hope you can see this uh, part of the camera. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I want to give you a sense of how deep the bassinet is and how much space you have. So for the first six months, uh, it's easy to scoop the baby out because you will be the frequent feeding cycles and the diaper change cycles. So um, that's uh, how the bassinet is designed. And then uh, the mesh has a velcro here it comes out this is the the matter the mattress i'm just going to take the mattress i'm going to show the mattress in a moment so this is the velcro you can remove it when you order the cradle wise does that include the mattress or is that a separate purchase no you, it includes the mattress you have uh, the mattress a mattress cover and a fitted sheet that comes with the crib. So you are ready to get started. And then yeah. is the mattress the breathable one where like in case they accidentally flip over yeah. or something, they're still able to breathe. And then that actually made me think of, does that alert you if they like flip over and like their face is invisible or? Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to explain okay. you what is breathability and how the mattress is designed. I'm going to show that in a moment. Yep. So, uh, if you can see this is the bassinet mesh, you can just peel it off uh, and you actually can wash this in a washer, uh, it's machine washable and then there is an attachment here uh, that comes out. So this is called as the bassinet mode attachment and uh, that's it, uh, it converts into a crib, the same mattress drops down and becomes uh, the crib, uh, you can then just you know, close the Velcro and uh, it becomes a crib. So it will take you not more than five minutes to do this at six months when the baby transitions to crib mode. Then also the uh, crib mesh, if you can see here, there's a zipper. Um, it comes out, it's pretty easy. This uh, crib mesh also comes out and you can wash that because you're going to use the crib for two years um, and, and things happen. So you need to, you know, often remove or wash it. It's very modular very easy to maintain it clean through the two years so that yeah i don't know how, how how did you feel about the build quality did you how did you like the uh, the mesh and all of that I mean, yeah i loved it it was so e it was easy to use no issues at all again once we you know sh it was about the six month mark where we were like oh yeah we're rolling we're trying to get on our hands and knees let's put her down now that we're at nine months, we put her awake in the crib. And so she like plays around and then goes to sleep by herself. Um, so again, it's all very easy and it's kind of the perfect size. I'm five, five and I can get down there pretty easily. So that it looks kind of deep, but it's not as deep as it seems. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, Cindy, as you were mentioning about the breathability, right? So, th we don't claim that the mattress is breathable, but it is firm and flat. So, your concern on the safety, um, as per the guidelines uh, on crib mattresses, uh, there is a firmness uh, requirement. So, there is a um, so Consumer Product Safety Commission, uh, CPSC they define the guidelines for a lot of consumer products uh, not only baby products right any like maybe your kitchen appliances and for uh, baby products it's the car seats and the cribs and the monitors right they have laid out all the certification requirements uh, so for the mattresses there's a mattress firmness test and we qualify for uh, the mattress firmness test so even if the baby rolls it's like any other crib uh, it, it, the main thing is that the mattress should not be soft because the risk is that it, the nose could wedge between the soft mattress and that's that's a, a, a safety risk, right? So as, as a parent, you have to just ensure that the baby is on the back 
uh, when you place for sleeping and it's on a firm and flat mattress um, that these are the I think so the top guidelines from AAP for a safe sleep uh, for your baby and one of the reasons that we don't claim breathability is because it's a what if you place a waterproof sheet and that's what we have we have a waterproof sheet so and if the mattress is breathable the waterproof sheet doesn't make it uh, breathable right so we have a waterproof sheet uh, for the uh, mattress and then the mattress cover is uh, waterproof so I'm just going to peel the mattress uh, the fitted sheet off <clears throat> and then you have uh, this the this is made of 100% cotton and uh, waterproof and then there's a mattress cover that is lightly quilted as you can see uh, and this is also waterproof I'll explain you why we have made this waterproof because the mattress that we are using is completely natural materials we have a natural rubber latex uh, the sandwich in between is of a coconut coir and a uh, and a plastic sheet here at the end so that it stays firm and flat and takes the shape of the uh, of the crib right mm, and uh, this is uh, this is biodegradable and doesn't have any volatile organic compounds generally the baby mattresses are made of pu foam which is a um, which is a uh, poly polyurethane foam right and they are known to emit a lot of volatile organic compounds so we are green guard gold certified uh, the entire product the wood the cloth the entire linen the mattress everything is green guard gold certified and that's the optional certification what green guard gold does is they look for um, any there are like 20,000 chemicals and gases that are listed they put the crib in the chamber and monitor if there are any emissions uh, from these uh, materials and then um, that certification has to be renewed annually so we are very particular about all the materials that go into the crib and uh, breathability there is no standard so you have to be cautious when other brands talk about breathability because um, there is no standard to qualify for that uh, and I know there are a couple of mattresses that have uh, you know uh, more uh, gaps and all of that stuff so that it's uh, breathable but we don't claim that it's a firm and flat mattress and that's what you need to uh, worry about and I mean did you feel safe or did you have any safety concern yeah I think we did a lot of research so I don't know if my husband put we're both in healthcare, so we both work in pediatric medicine um, in critical care as healthcare providers so wow. we were really worried. Uh, we kind of seen like some scary things and we just wanted to know how to get, you know, our kiddo asleep because we've, you know, had patients asleep for so long. So um, that was kind of something we were really concerned about. And then just how, like, what do babies do when they're at home? Like I've taken care of them for 12 hour shifts, but how do I take care of them for 24 hours a day when there's not machines and things taking, you know, doing a lot of work for me? It's, again, my baby quickly turned to a rollover belly sleeper, uh, probably at four months, which was terrifying for me because she loved to go on that right shoulder straight into the mattress. And, you know, is kind of how she likes sleeping. I did a lot of research on that. And that is that sheet is the hardest thing to get on and off that mattress. It is so tight. My husband, I was like, you must have shrunk this thing, but like you kind of battle it on and that's really what makes it so tight and that mattress really does feel safe. So um, again, we did a lot of research with the swaddling and there are other cribs that were out on the market or at least bassinets that were FDA approved. And we did a lot of looking at those, but versus this, which could last us two years and have the same mattress and have the same equipment. Um, it just seemed safe and it also seemed like a really good investment. So that's kind of why we made our cradle wise decision. Got it. Got it. Great. Great to know that you I mean you are in a healthcare sector and yeah. What, yeah. So you have, you would have seen very different styles of um, like of uh, whatever soothing or helping baby sleep or and taking care of babies and yeah. So, and I prided so. myself on getting babies to go to sleep. And we were without a cradle wise for the first, 
I guess it's about five and a half weeks. We kind of did it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it was the week we got our cradle wise that we figured out how to get sleep ourselves. So <laughs> again, that is like, if I could praise this one thing that it is a must have, um, I've swaddled babies for 10 years as a, I, you know, I see nurse and I could not get this baby to go to sleep the way she wanted to sleep. And so once we got this crib, we were able to get the right swaddle equipment and she was asleep in her cradle wise. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I can preach cradle wise all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think so that that's all I have and on the certifications as uh, I mentioned we are CPSC uh, uh, related certifications we have all those mandatory certifications then there is uh, juvenile product manufacturers association JPMA we are part of JPMA and uh, we also qualify for all the JPMA certifications and there is uh, we've gone above and beyond and done all the uh, optional certifications too uh, which is the green guard gold because we just want to ensure that as a baby company, we don't introduce anything that's uh, that adds to the indoor air pollution. There are a lot of our products like couches and our mattresses and the carpets. They keep releasing these uh, volatile organic compounds. So as a, as a crib where the baby sleeping for uh, 8 to 16 hours, we wanted to ensure that that's uh, free of those uh, harmful emissions. Now, also, as a, it's mandatory to do the uh, certification because it has electronics. We are FCC certified, so the baby monitor and all the electronics that's in the crib, that's uh, FCC certified. And in California, uh, you have something called as CP65, which is kind of California Prop 65, where uh, if you have any hazardous uh, or cancer-causing materials in the product, you need to uh, upfront put it as a big label on the product or on the packaging of the product. Uh, so we are CP65 qualified where they checked for lead, thalates, PPA, um, and uh, we don't have, like they chip off a uh, few milligrams of every part of the product and it's tested in the lab for any of these um, harmful uh, materials. So we are CP65 qualified and uh, we have taken care, uh, obviously that like, you know, uh, because as a crib, uh, it's a high touch point. Maybe when they teeth, they end up sometimes biting on the rail. So we've, it's all a uh, very safe material that we have used while building the product. Yep. So that's on the certifications. And any any questions, anything that you want to add, Amanda, and anything that you want to ask uh, to us, Cindy, please go ahead. Yeah, I feel like... Um... Yeah, I'm a big fan. I guess I don't know what the cons are. I haven't hit them. She's still loving it. We're at nine months. We're going to, we get to stay in it a little bit longer. Again, I thought that was such a difference from a lot of the other things that were on the market. Um, that this is something that we get to keep for two years. And so we're big fans. Great. Great. Thank no you. questions Thank for you. me. It was, it was very informative. Yeah, yeah, great. All right, uh, then we're almost at time. And uh, if you have any, I, I know it was a lot of information. So if you have anything that as a follow up question, you can write us to support at cradlewise.com and one of our uh, customer support team people will, you know, uh, get you the answer right, right there. Um, and uh, thank you so much, Darren and Amanda. I mean, uh, and, and just as a, I generally say this upfront, but I somehow forgot. So we, we, we just met you right before, like not even before. Yes, I, I don't know who you all are. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> we, this is, we, we send out emails to our community. Uh, and when somebody wants to share uh, their experience, we get them on this demo. So it's, there, there's no incentive. I mean, we, obviously send a small gift for spending one hour with us but apart from that we we don't um, we, 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 we are not working on any model with Amanda or Darren so just a uh, <laughs> uh, small disclaimer yep so great I wish I had this you know nine years ago when I was on the other side of the <laughs> table <I was> like, <laughs> right yeah All I right. think 
okay. I oh, I have to say it a million more times, but this is like my, you know, I've done all the fancy strollers and I have the car seats and, you know, the bottles, like that's always so tricky. But mm -hmm. to me, this was like the best decision I made. And I, my husband was very apprehensive because of the price. And I mean, he can probably say it himself, but he was like, I mean, we're going to spend that much money on a crib. And the first week we had it, I said, I would pay it. I would pay it again. So yeah, I thought the price was a little wacky at first, but then once I realized that everything else out there is also expensive and uh, the benefits of this thing are, are just definitely there. So the, the benefit to a uh, cost ratio is, uh, is, is in the parents favor on this one. Gotcha. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I do understand. Like, I mean, and this is what, uh, I, I, me and Bharat, my, my husband and co-founder, we realized is that you buy a monitor, you buy the uh, sound machine and you have the crib and the bassinet and you have a rocker, all of them, then that's the reason that we wanted to integrate all in one because even if you buy all these things, they're not talking to each other and in the end, you are sitting on a $15 yoga ball and bouncing the baby through the night yourself because... <laughs> The monitor will just inform you that, hey, your baby woke up crying and uh, the most important thing is sleep, right? Like At least you need to sleep for a continuous three to four hours to feel refreshed. Then you don't mind waking up and attending and then again at two, three hours. So those, those moments where, you know, that technology can be a, a little helpful um, as you're navigating this super peak in your life. <laughs> Thank you all so much for taking the time Thank to go so through much. it and yes. giving me your, your honest feedback, um, Amanda, and, and letting me know how you guys are surviving parenthood. <laughs> yes, you know, it's hard. It's ugly. Like, nothing's going to... But I think the good part is, like, I, when I was awake, I got some sleep, and I was awake, and I got to, like, enjoy a little bit of the mm -hmm. trauma that is parenthood. Um, but it's everything's a little bit rough. But yes, at nine months, I have a baby who sleeps. 10 plus hours a night which is crazy awesome. <laughs> all right great thank you so much for sharing your feedback yeah. and um, yep uh, thank you cindy uh for joining and hoping to see your baby sleep in cradle wise soon thank you all right see you good luck Bye. yeah thank you <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.